Um, this is Priya. Welcome to my channel on generative AI applications. Um, I recently built uh, a GitHub chatbot. So, you know, uh, if you've been playing with generative AI, there's a lot of applications out there that allow you to chat with like a library of documents. Uh, but as a developer, one very common use case is we're kind of working on code and there the GitHub repos sort of end up growing quite a bit where there's a lot of files that are interconnected. And I thought it would be fun to build a chatbot that would um, chat with a GitHub repo. Um, I did this project for fun, but the chatbot that was finally built was actually quite useful. So I've been using it myself quite a bit. I want to show you um, the the chatbot. I open sourced it um, on a public streamlit cloud. So anyone um, can use it. In fact, I encourage you to play with it. Um, I've shared the link to the code and the link to the streamlit cl cloud um, in the in the video itself. Okay, so um, um, I tried this um, model on a couple of repos. So one of them is the segment anything um, repo by Facebook that um, goes over the SAM model. So you can see it's a pretty big repo with a lot of um, code. So um, I was able to use the model, um, use this chatbot to get more information about the SAM model. It's also able to return code snippets. So for example, if I want to know how to run the model on an image, it gave me the exact steps I need to follow. Um, I asked it, uh, I mean, if I only want a specific mask in the video, um, inside a bounding box, give me the code for that. And so, I mean, it becomes easier, um, to find snippets of code, um, using this. Um, another repo that I tested, um, this one is the VIT PyTorch repo. It's a pretty, pretty popular repo. Um, and you can see it's a pretty big repo with a lot of different VIT models, um, discussed in it. So I thought this would be a good use case to test the bot. So I um, tested this um, by um, just kind of, first of all, learning about different VIT models. I asked the difference between distal VIT and how it differs from VIT model. And it did give me a pretty good response. It told me about the distillation process in the student and the teacher model. Um, I was able to get um, ready to use code on how to train distal VIT on a sample dog cat classifier. And you see, that's a pretty good job of loading the model from the repo. Um, and then it goes through the standard code for training through PyTorch. Um, you can also, um, also give me pretty good <laughs> response on like open-ended questions. Like if my application requires fast inference speed, which, um, which VIT model is good. So it did some reasoning to su suggest a model. Um, so we're all like, I'm quite impressed with the, with this bot. Um, and you know, I, I hope you guys try it out on your own GitHub repos and share feedback, um, and your comments in the video. So I want to briefly go through the, the steps I followed to build the bot. Um, generally the high level steps here are the kind of four blocks here. So first is you decide like a repo and we use a Git package to clone the repo. Um, the one requirement here is that, um, well, in this code, it's a, it should be a public repo that could be easily cloned. Um, then uh, we chunk and embed the code snippets. I've used DeepLake as the database for um, embedding. Um, it's an it's a, a cloud-based data storage or vector store, uh, but it's free to use for the usage that I've had so far. And then we use LangChain to build a conversational retrieval chain. And finally, um, I built a streamlit interface around this, which makes it easy uh, to chat with the with the bot. So let me go through the the, the four steps here um, in the code. Like I said, the link to the GitHub repo is actually shared. So the first step here is um, is cloning the GitHub repo. So for that, I've used the Git package here, um, and it's pretty simple to just clone a repo. Um, I used the clone path as the name of the, of the vector store database, um, so that the same name flows through everywhere. Um, the second step is to chunk and embed the code. So as part of this, once you have the GitHub repo clone, we first extract all the files from it. Um, 
you can uh, limit the files that are used so in this code i've limited to p uh, files with kind of python based files but um, this is totally up to you depending on the application you can extend this to any number of files or use all the files in the repo um, and then we use the text loader class from langchain to load everything into um, a document um, then to sort of before we embed this we need to split the documents into smaller chunks so we use the character text splitter um, specified a chunk size of a thousand but this is up for experimentation you can have bigger chunks um, but then you kind of have to deal with the, the the token limit of the model that you're working with so if you're working with gpt 16k then you can have like bigger chunks but i was working with gpt 3.5 which has a, a limit of around 4,000 tokens and then finally um to just embed in deep it's pretty simple you just need to give the um, definer data set path and you'd give your embedding function so one note here um typically you know a lot of developers tend to use the open ai embeddings um i found that it's um easier to i mean it's sort of more cost effective plus easy to run with hugging face embeddings in particular um there's the all mini lm um l6 model that can run on cpu it runs quite fast and the results were, were fairly good um, I do want to do another old video about embedding functions, but for now, um, I use these open source embeddings and they, they worked quite well. The way the deep plague works here is that once you create the data set path once, it sort of stays on deep plague. So the second time, or if you're going to go back and reuse the data set, then it's, then you don't have to repeat the steps for embedding and creating the database. Okay, very cool. So those are the kind of main steps for creating the database. Um, so with this, like, we now have everything ready to use and our next step is to, to build the conversational retrieval chain. Um, so for this, I've used the, the, uh, the conversation retrieval chain method in LangChain. Um, we need to pass in the Deep Lake database as the retriever here. Um, Deep Lake makes it easy to specify some basic parameters of of what you want to re retrieve. So we've used cosine similarity as the, as the similarity metric and we've set the number of relevant results, uh, k to three here. So it's going to bring the top three um, most relevant snippets. Um, so because I wanted to build a chat chatbot here, I had to pass in the chat history. Um, the way I chose to do that is to define a Python queue um so that we can store um the most recent conversations this I, I found this was kind of important for me um because the open ai model has a limit of 4k tokens and the the responses and the history here can get pretty big so i limited it to a queue size of two and that became my my chat history is so going to store the two two most recent conversation and pass them to the model. There can be better ways of doing this. You can use the conversation buffer window um, functionality in LangChain as well to do this. But I opted for something uh, simple and that worked well here. So that is the basic code for building the, the conversational bot. And what really happens in this step is that the retriever brings out the the top k results and then um, there is a prompt to the model to 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 compose that into a well-formed answer very cool um and then the last step here is to build the streamlit bot so um i've been pretty impressed streamlit has added a lot of easy functionality to build a chatbot so i didn't really have to sort of do much here they um i looked through their documentation and i got the code snippet for building a chatbot um, essentially what they have here is you have to just define um, the uh, the function that will give the bot response and then they maintain a session state where they store all the history. Um, so that's pretty much the, the basics of building the bot. I am keen to kind of extend this project to add more, um, more relevant code features as well. Like the bot can be intelligent enough to give more insights into the repo. So if you are interested in um, collaborating with me on this, um, reach out. Very cool. I hope you like the like this um, 
um, video. If you if there are other topics that you're interested in, let me know in comments and please subscribe for the channel. Thank you.